Hey everybody, this is Matt Houlihan here with Volley HQ. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to be overviewing our email service provider that we use called GMAS today uh, and just overviewing some of the strengths and weaknesses that we have found using this program as well as some of the other programs that we have used um, throughout the years that we've been doing this. So um, yeah, let's jump right into it. We used to use um, Constant Contact. We used to use MailChimp as well um, for our service pro email service providers uh, and for our email list building, uh, which are hugely important and that we have talked about uh, on previous videos as well, um, just about getting, getting people's contact information and the way in which we can go about sending out um, you know, broadcast emails uh, about the events that we have coming up, whether it be tryouts or camps or clinics. Um, and what we actually started to notice was just that, you know, all of these service providers just look the same. Um, you know, they have the same type style of templates. Uh, you can customize them to, to the best of your ability and it all looks, you know, pretty, pretty standard, pretty straightforward. Um, you can tell it's coming from, you can tell it's coming from a service provider for sure. Um, so what we were looking for is for ways to be as personal as possible. Um, with our families and with the people that are joining our mailing lists. Uh, and so we use, um, we use Gmail, we use uh, G Suite for all of our, um, you know, our, our domains, our Google Sheets, uh, all of our registration forms sync up to our Google Sheets uh, as well. Uh, so we were looking for ways to try and use Gmail, something that everyone is very familiar with, something that looks very much native um, to the, the email experience that all of our families are, are used to um, as our service provider. And so after some research uh, and trialing out a couple of different places or a couple of different services, um, the best one we came up with or found was a program called GMAS. Uh, and essentially what it is, it's a, it's a mail merge service that is built on top of Gmail and uses Google Sheets as kind of the backup database that it pulls all the information from. Uh, and so if you saw our video on uh, autoresponders where we kind of went into merge tags, um, this, is, this is why this is cool and this is why this is important. Uh, and the main reason we like um, GMAS. So um, I'll actually just open up GMAS for you so you can see. Um, here's a couple of our draft emails that we have set up through GMAS, uh, our automatic subs subscribing email, our happy birthday email, uh, as well, but just to show you kind of a little test of if we were going to be um, if we were going to be sending out a mass email, uh, how that would look. And basically, what you'll do is you'll click on this little uh, Google Sheet tab up here, which is connected uh, through GMAS. And it's going to give you a drop-down menu once it does load up to actually pull up the sheet that you want to use. Uh, and so we're going to connect to the spreadsheet. Once we connect to the spreadsheet, it's essentially going to show us. Um, or give us the option to merge any of the information from that sheet into this email. So we'll go ahead and connect. It'll show you kind of what it looks like when we are actually writing an email. Um, so I did the test sheet. So I'm going to switch over to that so you can see. Um, this is what it'll look like inside. So this is the GMAS test, test email sheet that I just synced to. Um, and so you can put anything you want in these tabs. So the registration system that we use is automatically synced. Um, to our um, Google Sheets page um, to create, all, to pull all that information and put it in its own row. Uh, and so it has our email address on here. It's got my first name, my last name, my school, and my birthday. So just some examples of the things that we'd be looking for um, to try and get some information about our customers. And as say, say you have a trial form, as people register, you know, John Smith may join. And so his information will be automatically synced on here as well that will populate into all these sheets um, for you, right? And so those are the things that you'll be able to pull from, okay? So as those names get automatically added into the list, as you go to email, they will automatically be populated in there as well. So if I hop back over to the email that we're writing through GMAS, it's just like writing a Gmail message, right? So I get the opportunity now to just be as personal as possible with it. Um, and so what we really like is just using the merge tags, right? So if I was writing a normal email, I'd just say, hey, to the first name, right? And so what you actually do is you click on GMAS uh, and you can click on the personalized drop down menu right here. And it's gonna give you a list of all of those column headers that we had, 
right? So your email address, the first name, last name, the school, and the birthday. Uh, and it's just gonna copy that onto your clipboard. And when you go to the email, click paste. And now you've got, hey, first name. So when it actually sends an email out, it'll say, hey, Matt, to me. Um, you can also add in just a little, um, an override as well. So say someone subscribes and you don't actually require them to have, uh, to input their first name, so you only have their email. What you can do is you can just add in a little bar here and then say, hey, in there. So if they don't have the first name inputted when they subscribe, then GMAS will automatically just replace that with there instead. So your message will say, hey there, rather than hey, blank space or bracket first name, right? So you're trying to keep it as personalized as possible uh, under the constraints that you have. So whether or not you're requiring people to put the first name or other information in there is, is what's gonna determine that. And then you're just gonna go off and you're gonna write your normal email like you would. Uh, in, in, in any sort of Gmail message. So just wanted to let you know about tryouts coming up in two weeks. Here is the link for registration, right? Something simple like that. Um, just trying to get some information out to people. Um, but now you can kind of, you can kind of imagine the power of what this program does when you have, you know, 300 emails on this list right now i'm writing a personalized message to 300 people all at the same effort as writing one email right as long as i've done the legwork to set up you know the registration system to link to an actual google sheet right and then i'm just pulling from that google sheet for all of my all of my broadcast emails right and so you can also set up some different things in this um, that make gmas pretty cool as well so if i just finish it off and say let me know if you have any questions. Matt, great. Um, cool things that GMS lets you do. Um, if you have a template, so kind of your standard way that you write an email, you can pull that up from a past email. Um, you can do what's called an auto follow-up. So this is one of the cool ones uh, in this. So uh, if I click on this button, and I go ahead and say, you know, if they do not reply, so say it's, you know, you're sending out an important message um, that you have, uh, the people on this sheet are late on club dues. You know, if they don't reply and you're asking them for a reply in, you know, one day or 10 hours or one hour, or whatever it may be, whatever you set it to here, GMAS will automatically follow up with them and say whatever message you type in here. So, you know, I could put in a, hey, first name, just wanted to bubble this up to the top of your inbox. Great, right? So that's an easy way to keep following up, keep on top of mind, and just allow this software to do the work for you, right? Just knowing that you're putting in the initial upfront legwork and it's handling all the follow-up, right? Likewise, you can do if they don't open it, if they don't click on a link in there, or just all in general, right? So if you're setting up um, when we set up our autoresponder um, for someone who initially subscribes to our list, we have a series of seven emails in this list and it's all set up through auto follow up. So we would click all in this sense of saying, no matter what, you know, in two days after they subscribe or after this email is sent, we want this email to be sent as well and so on and so forth. And so you can just keep up, keep on setting up stages, right? So you can just see the kind of the, the funnels that you're able to create, whether it be a sales funnel whether it just be an educational funnel where you're trying to um, tell people more about your club and it's the programs that you offer as you're leading into tryouts or summer camps and things like that. Um, it's a great, powerful tool for you in that sense. Um, of course, it's got the standard kind of scheduling. So if you want to send an email tomorrow at 8 a.m. or you're looking to send an email on Friday, you can, you know, you can schedule it for whatever you want. Um, all that good stuff on there. And then which are advanced ones, yes. Uh, this is another good one. You can suppress emails as well. So um, say you're doing some, some marketing emails um, and you don't want to, you don't want to cross over two different groups. Um, maybe, maybe you sent an email out to your club list, like your people who are currently on your club teams about a special offer for summer camps that were, they're getting 15% you know, off because they're a part of the club currently. And you want to send another email out, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, to your master list about summer camps as well. Um, but you don't want to bog down your um, your club participants with another email. You can just type in here. Anyone who's received this past email in 
you know, in the past past 24 hours, we don't want to send it to them. GMAS automatically removes them from the send list and you can send your email out worry-free knowing that you're not going to send them, you know, two emails at once. Um, so some, some cool tools that you can use to kind of up your, up your game, but also keep things super personalized as well. Um, other good, good little things that we've liked about GMAS, um, it's sent on the, on the Gmail servers. So why is that important? Because no one puts Gmail Gmail into the spam filter, right? When it comes from a Gmail account, it is almost always going to be delivered. Whereas if it goes through an email service provider's account, like a Mailchimp um, or a, a Drip or a Constant Contact, um, you, it's not always guaranteed. They're they're very good, but it's not Gmail status. Gmail is like everyone uses Gmail, so it never ends up in the spam filter. So that's that's a great um, aspect of it as well. Um, it is limited. Um, some of the limitations of GMAS is, you know, Gmail limits you to basically being able to send 5,000 emails a day. So if your list is really, really big, um, then, you know, there's some workarounds you can do to be able to send out more emails than that. But Gmail will kind of shutter your emails and basically stop you at that 5,000 limit each day. Um, so if you're planning on sending more than 5,000 emails at a time, you have a huge list. Um, that you're that you're blowing stuff out to, then um, wouldn't recommend GMAS for that for that aspect. That's definitely a limiting factor. Um, you know, I think the the other parts of it as well is that it takes a little bit of um, it takes a little bit of computer knowledge to be able to set up um, some of the longer funnels to be able to set up some of the um, some of the more complicated autoresponders like the birthday emails. Um, you know that that it's super easy to do and when we did mailchimp it was just literally a pre-made template um, and all you had to do was just you know click publish and it was ready to go and was sending people emails uh, on their birthday um, you know again the flip side of that is you can tell it's just a mailchimp autoresponder email whereas if you can get it done in gmas and kind of follow the steps to create that birthday email it comes across as a super personalized um, super personalized email just to pop it up for you so you can see, you know, as something that's just coming directly from your coach or from your club director. Um, those are cool things that you can play around with and, and aren't just limited to birthdays, but there's a lot of different uh, different ways that you can you can work some personalized emails into your, your contact and just staying up to date with um, people in your club. So um, some good things, some bad things, some um, things in between, but uh, we've liked definitely having GMAS on um, on our email, um, one of our email tools, uh, we've continued to hold on to um, Mailchimp for just the free account uh, to be able to send out some larger emails um, when we get into kind of our master list, which is bigger um, than what GMAS can currently handle. So I um, hope you guys found that uh, information helpful or at least spark some different ideas for you on how you can be using your email um, to, to better service your club. Uh, to, to up your customer service game in that sense uh, as well. If you're interested in checking out GMAS, we've got a link for you uh, um, right down below uh, that you can check out. And if you do end up using GMAS, it benefits us. Um, a small portion of, of your payment would go to supporting us uh, through an affiliate link. So if that is something you're interested in doing, awesome. If not, no worries. Uh, I hope the, the general thoughts about how we've been using email can be helpful to you. Uh, in your guys' business as well. If you have any questions, please let us know. Drop us a comment. We'd love to hear from you guys uh, and, and see the creative ways that you're using uh, your email and, and the creative ways that you're going about operating your business right now in these, uh, in these times. So I uh, appreciate you guys spending some time with me, and I will see you again soon.